All right, so we're talking now about fat grafting and its role in a face and a neck lift. You know, almost every facelift nowadays um, benefits from some fat grafting. In someone who is a fuller figured person, higher BMI, um, a fuller figured face, those patients already have enough soft tissue and it's rare that they've lost so much that they need to have fat grafting. So there are certainly some patients who don't need fat grafting, but the majority of the patients that I interact with do benefit from at least some fat grafting. First of all, what is fat grafting? Fat grafting is basically borrowing fat from one part of the body and repositioning it, uh, relocating it to another part of the body. We're talking about the face and neck, so specifically it's relocating it to the face. Let's talk a little bit about how we go about that. First of all, we do a minor amount of liposuction in a variety of different areas, sometimes in the abdomen, sometimes in the flank, sometimes the inner outer thighs, sometimes in the knees. Clearly, those decisions are ones that are made um, in concert with the patient's desires or where they would like to have it done, but also it, it also to some degree reflects where the fat is and how much fat we ultimately need. Um, so it might be all of those locations and a very thin person, maybe only a couple of those locations. People always ask, you know, is this gonna make a big change, a positive one in the location from which we remove the fat? And we're not removing that much fat that it makes an immense um, difference and not an immense benefit. There can be little subtle changes that you see. Um, it's very rare that it causes a problem at all. And sometimes it adds a little bit to the attractiveness of the areas that we remove the fat from. Anyhow, we remove the fat, uh, with the process of liposuction. Then we clean it up, um, remove some of the oil that's associated with it and a little bit of blood if there is some, and then we place it in smaller needles and then we inject it into the face. Um, we use little two millimeter cannulas, sometimes even smaller ones, to place it in some specific areas. These are the most common areas that benefit from fat grafting in association with a facelift. One is adding some to the temples. You know, as we age, our temples do lose some fat and the muscle underneath them also atrophies a little bit. And people can get a concavity here that creates coarse skeletal appearance um, in the periorbital region adjacent to the temple. Um, and it also just connotes a certain amount of age or even infirmity um, or being ill, if you will. Uh, and so adding fat to that area can be extremely helpful in really rolling back uh, the calendar, if you will. Um, what we do is uh, make a small, really tiny incision with a needle actually in the hairline and then inject fat into the temporal hollow. Usually that's about three to five cc's. Um, another area that benefits from it is that even though a face and a neck lift lifts the cheek, sometimes there's a little hollow area, um, a little flat area in the central, central lateral cheek. And, Adding fat to that area can also be quite helpful. Usually that's about three to five cc's as well. Often women want to have their lips augmented. Um, so if they have been using fillers in the past, they like that appearance, they wanna find a way to have to, to be able to cut down on the amount of filler that they require. Adding a small amount of fat to the upper and lower lips can do that. Um, it's good to warn people that it often looks really large initially because the lip really becomes inflamed pretty quickly with a fat grafting, but um, within a couple of days or even a, a week or so, it comes down to a much more natural appearance. I've never had a patient regret it. Um, often they wish that I was able to put a little bit more, but there are limitations. Um, the amount that I can put in in one session is usually about three cc's in the upper lip and two cc's in the lower lip. One other area that's helpful to add some fat is right along the bone here, we call the hole where the nose exists, the piriform aperture. And in the lower outer aspects of the piriform aperture, adding some fat there is as if we're augmenting the bone there. <clears throat> and the benefit of that is that it pushes out a little bit on the hollowness below the nasolabial fold, that nasolabial crease, and can help decrease the uh, intensity or the size of the nasolabial folds that people are always trying to fill um, and where the facelift definitely helps alleviate some of that, but adding a little bit of fat there can really go a long way. Usually it's about two to three C's in that region as well. And then the final areas are in the lower face. Um, it's really nice in some patients who have a slightly weak or retrusive chin to inject some fat along the chin as a little mini chin augmentation. 
Um, clearly a conversation we have to have a, with a patient to make sure they're on board with it, but it can be really a really nice addition to a facelift. Um, in that area, it could be anywhere from three cc's to six cc's, really spread out from one side of the chin to the other. And then another area that I think works really nicely in some patients is if they have a little bit of weakness to their jawline, uh, is to add some along the bone, along the jawline. And in some patients, we're adding as much as 10 cc's there, especially in this area here called the gonial angle, um, so that we're creating a nice contour to, to that, uh, that structure, the jawline, that the face and the necklace also helps reveal.